All right, Russ, it is the June 2021 Passive Income Report. And before we get to the actual report, I actually want to throw out a new idea. Okay, let's hear it. We, we might be putting this on the report in two or three months. Okay, bring it. So, as you know, I uh, we're going out west to the Land Geek in Las Vegas next month to teach at their boot camp. And I decided, you know what? Why don't we go on a road trip as a family and attend the boot camp? Because you are glutton for punishment? Exactly. Yeah, my two-year-old is going to drive me crazy. But we decided to make it a 25-day road trip. 25 days. Dang, dude, you never work. <laughs> 25 days? I know I'll be working. I don't think road, I knew it was 25 you know. days. You talked yeah. to me about this, and I was thinking like, okay, it's two weeks. That's well, you know, bad. then we got to hit Tahoe, and we got to hit all the parks and everything. I mean, parks, you know, the national parks and the monuments and all the... Like Wally you know, World? No, <laughs> we're passing on Wally World, okay? But anyways, all that being said, I decided, well, why don't we rent an RV? Okay. And then I decided, totally oh, make, my God, Totally makes sense, by the way. That's like $10,000 to rent somebody else's RV. Why don't I just buy one? How, how many miles is it? Do you know, like, from here to there? The whole round trip is going to be somewhere around 5,000 to 6,000 miles. Five to six thousand miles over twenty-five days. Yeah, totally. With five kids, a two-year-old. Yeah, piece of cake. So easy. Anyways, long story short, bought an RV. Yep. But if I'm going to own an uh, a depreciating asset like an RV, I gotta make it cash flow. We're gonna turn this thing into an, a short-term rental. So we're putting this thing on like Turo or what? Or RVShare.com? What? Well, okay, so this is the dilemma. Do I rent it out to people to drive to a destination and, and bring it back to me? Okay. Or, and this is the one I'm kind of leaning towards, set, find a really cool location with a nice piece of land and some some water, or maybe some things to do, some amenities, and park it and give people an experience to go stay in an RV for a weekend or for a week or whatever, but not to move it. Do you want to find a place that already has like hookups and stuff? Or are you looking for like a place where you could like a van down by the river kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to the van down the river, but ideally I would love to find an RV park that would allow this kind of deal and have all those amenities, all the hookups already set up. So you're just going to basically rent a spot for them long-term. Does that sort of stuff exist? Well, I'll go ahead and say the first person I called did not like the idea. What did she like? Well, she, she didn't like the idea of there being multiple people in and out on this one location but and not having control over those people registering. So they just need to register? I mean, because she constantly has people coming in and out of the place already that she doesn't know. What's the deal? I, you know what? We didn't get that far, but it was not a positive conversation. Don't so let, don't, we got to solve this. Don't let this lady hold you back, I'm man. Not, I'm not. She's, you know, there's she, more places. Is she the one who writes checks around that place, or is she the one that uh, gets pay, a paycheck around that place? She gets a paycheck. Okay. Yeah. You just got to get to the check writer. Yeah. That's that's the next thing. So so keep keep tuned. Um, there are some folks in our community that have have kind of inspired me to do this. Joel, for instance. So, we, but th with, let me be really clear. You're not. This is an RVShare.com. This is Airbnb. I'm going to rent out, and but it's it's on Airbnb, but it's an RV that they're renting. Yes, that's okay. my goal. Okay, because by the way, I am super interested in this Turo thing. Okay, and Tell I more. and I'm going to do that. Well, we'll wait for another podcast to talk about that one. Okay, that's another episode. A, a totally another episode. But let's jump into this one because I, I'm excited to share with you what happened with our passive income this month and hope that it'll inspire you to take action. By the way, go to wealthwhitewallstreet.com forward slash passport. That's the first step into getting your goal. And I know we talk about that in this episode, but I don't want you to miss out on the first step to being financially free, and that is getting your goal. So wealthwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Let's jump into the passive income report for June 2021. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race 
and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. All right, every single month we come to you and share our own personal passive income journey. The purpose, Joey, I think you and I have for this is so that way it's transparent. It's not a lot of fluff of what people talk about sometimes. It's actually what we're doing. Right, wrong, or indifferent. What do you mean right, wrong, or indifferent? Well, I'm, we, got, we got some things wrong this month. What's wrong? Some things went backwards. I don't know if that's wrong. You say backwards. Did we lose money? We didn't lose money. We made money. So we don't, did. don't say did. that. Don't be hard on yourself. I'm, I'm just saying. I don't we, think that that's actual r- realistic. If someone thought every single month their passive income would only go up, that would be a, a way to really. be like uh, the housing market in 2006. I, I think it'd be a depression. I think they're like, if you only measure against that, if that's the only measurement, that would be um, kind of faulty advertising. Exactly. But, but my point is, is we're going to share with you when things don't always go up the right way and you get hit with things like taxes that you didn't even know. Hey, here's the thing about this. I don't know, Joey, you, you're you riding down the road right now. Listen to us. You want to slap Joey just the way I do right now because I'm pissed. I'm like, dude, why are you bringing me down? This like Our passive income report to me every single month is something that I look forward to. I see a number like $43,526 came in last month, and Joey's sitting over here freaking Debbie Downer. Hey, you know what? It's less than the month before. Quit being Debbie Downer. I'm just saying. How much need more is it than it was a year ago? About 40000 <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's what I want to know. It's an increase. That's what I want to know. Year you ready to year. buy some more stuff? Is that what we need to do? I mean, we're, we're going to try some stuff. Okay. Come up with something smart to say. I got to do a calculation. I just thought about this. Oh, you go, okay. He's getting the calculator. You, it may be a minute. But no, this is a, an opportunity for you to get behind the scenes. Uh, we're going to actually share the report here. Actually, let me go ahead and do that right now. Why, why are you that? sharing the report? Here's what I know, Joey. If based upon Wade Fowl, Dr. Wade Fowl, the person who did all the study on how much money one would need to have in a typical investment account in order to quote unquote retire and not run out of money with 100% probability over 20 years, this is how much money said person would have to have in order to kick out $43,526.42. How much? They would need to have in an account $17 million. $410,400. $410,400. I say we're doing pretty good. How long would it take you and I to save $17,410,400? Several, $410, several lifetimes. Okay. I just want That's you a to, lot of like, as you're listening and watching this at home, this is what this is all about. Every single month, it is about how this compares. Compared to what? Now, if we want to compare our 43000 last month to... Uh, John Lee Dumas or to Pat Flynn, who we've both had both of them on the show who have uh, 300 something thousand every single month. Yeah, I, I feel bad. Yeah. If we want to compare it to Russ and Joey 2021 or 2020, I'm sorry. It's like, yeah, we're doing pretty good going on up. But I really want to compare it to all the Wall Street knuckleheads out there. That's right. When you have to get seventeen million four hundred ten thousand four hundred dollars in order to produce the same forty three thousand. $526 a month. I'm feeling pretty good. And we did not invest nearly $17 million. How much money did we invest to create $43,526? You asked, you want me to add that up? Like I, I, mean, I, I give them a ballpark. You I, I've showed I you the it's, report it's, constantly. It's about nine hundred thousand. No, Joey doesn't add very well. What? I, I got my it's shoes a, off. It's, it's about a million right five. Now. It's about a million, a million five. five. Okay, okay. Sorry. Because you're forgetting other monies that we've put in in the past for some of these things. Okay. Here, here's the point, though. It's not $17 million. <laughs> It's a hair below. All right. Now, this is enough about that. I want to get to the numbers because each and every month we talk about these just for transparency. Please do not take this as what you should go do. It, in order for you to understand that investing has nothing to do with the investments and everything to do with the investor, right? That's right. There's no good or bad investments. 
only good or bad investors. And we created a process for you to be able to go through to get a goal. Like Joey and I went through this and said, what does financial freedom mean to us? We created a goal within that. We determined who we need to be, what we needed to do and stop doing what we wanted to have. And when we stopped trading time for money, when we got to the point that we were financially free, what would that mean? So you can do that too. If you're watching live, you can see that our screen shows that you can go in there and uh, go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash passport and take the first step because there's three steps to financial freedom. We've got a book that's coming out later this year. Hopefully you'll participate um, in getting a copy of that. We'd love to get your feedback. But when you take that first step, it's going to help you find a goal. In step two, Joey, is helping people get a plan, not a financial right. plan. Those are garbage. A plan of action, like what am I need to do? Well, who do I need to become so that I can get the things that I want? That's right. You go deep in our Pathfinder course to get your plan. And you start with who am I as an investor? That is the most important thing. That's the number one. Thing. That is the part. That's what I want to talk about right now. Who are you as an investor? Once you know that, then you can say, okay, let me apply who I am to the various passive income ideas, which we have a passive income matrix that you get access to in that Pathfinder course. And you say, okay, what are the pros, the cons, and the key factors about each one of these things? And do they match up with who I am as an investor? And here's the thing is that most of us want the easy button. We literally want to be able to press something, give money, and watch money come in. You see, you see our numbers and you can say, ooh, I don't know what ATM means. You know, I put money in them uh, or take money out, but how do, how do I get money from the, you, you may look at these numbers. You may go, Ooh, what is this? W U I B R S T R. Like what are all those acronyms? Well, you're going to see over at the number. You're like, well, it says to me, it looks like you guys brought in $15,554. I want whatever that is. Right. That sounds good. Right. But see, the point is, it's not about the investment. It's about in the investor. So when you go through the investor DNA, you look at some of the items. I mean, we just put six of the items in which we invest in on that list. Not that that's the list that you should choose. It's not from. comprehensive. No, there's an infinite amount of opportunities. We're learning every day. The reason we do this podcast so we can learn new ideas. The reason we have guests, we're about to have someone come in and eat lunch with us in a second. He's going to be sharing ideas. I love learning. And, but I, what I have to do, what Joey has to do is apply our own personal investor style, our own personal investor DNA to the report. All right, Joey, I, I know people are tired of us talking about that. Just share the numbers. Tell us more, you knuckleheads, about what you did. <laughs> but I think it's just so vital that we keep sharing that. And I don't want you to miss out on the free passport challenge, the thing that will help you get your goal and ultimately lead you toward financial freedom. So GPS. Goal, plan, support. The third step is, and you've heard us talk about on the podcast, about getting in the inner circle. Our inner circle has changed. It's now a program. It's a process to help coach you through the different as aspects to get to financial freedom. I hope that you'll go through this process. You'll join us in there, join everyone else, so you can network, you can get coaching, you can get the tools and access to people that will help you become financially free. That's right. So let's go ahead and start at the top. We're going to go over our land business. And we shouldn't even call it a land business, right? You and I have talked about it. It's a note business. It, it, it just happens to be based off of raw land sales. Yeah. So we, and like many of you on here, are um, following a process the uh, Land Geek, Mark Podolsky's team, have put out. Joey and I are actually getting ready to travel to Las Vegas next month. That's right. I love the land business. But as you said, really... We don't care about what we're buying and selling. It's more about the fact that we sell on terms and we create streams of income. In the month of June, we created $7,927 worth of monthly note income. Right. And typically those terms are 48 to 60 months. So those are going to be coming in for a very long time. It, it varies, though. So if you're looking at this live, you notice that our number was down 4% over the previous month. We had a couple of defaults. The defaults actually outweighed the new sales that came. And that happens. You're going to add, you're going to subtract, but the goal should be that we continue to acquire property. Right now, just like everything, the supply to land, raw land, is, is very lower compared to the demand. It's pretty scarce, right? Like people don't want to turn loose of it. So 
And, you know, our group is in, in the process of trying to acquire bigger chunks of properties that we can divide up and give more supply to our land business. This is something that I think is is a um, just another a sign of where the market is. Yep, no doubt. Are you looking for ways to implement ideas, get exposure to new ones, and be surrounded by people on the same journey as you? Joey, where can they go to do that? Go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash community. You can join for free today. So big, a big uh, highlight for the last month was Iron City Cattle. And what is Iron City Cattle again? Iron City Cattle is... And this is really... I, I know everybody else wants to know, but I still want to know. Too. <laughs> it is a... It was a an experiment. Let's just say. Just tell us what it is. Okay. We buy um, sometimes embryos, sometimes... Um, embryos? Cattle, yeah. Like high-end cattle embryos. Okay. And we put them into re reciprocal animals. <laughs> What's a reciprocal animal? Like an animal that... Um, <laughs> the animal reciprocates? Well, let's like, just I say... Know, like, you, you it's give a someone, carrier. I know okay? you give someone a gift and you hope that they will reciprocate yeah. the gift. Yeah, no. This How does is that not... work? Do you give the cow an embryo and they give you one back? They, they give us a cow back. They give us a cow. <laughs> you give them an embryo, they give you a cow. That's right. That sounds like the way I used to treat girlfriends in high school. <laughs> I give them a very small gift, and I, I would normally get a larger gift back. Yeah, these the calf is larger than the embryo. If you can um, only see Joey's face right now, he's just it, trying to figure out how to process <laughs> that response. <laughs> I love it. I listen to these podcasts with my wife just because I'm like, you gotta, you gotta hear what I said and how Joey responded because he's like, just how do I deal with spot. pure redneck? Puts me on the spot all the time. But regardless, it sounds like a great deal, right? You put in a small embryo, you get a big calf. I, that's a that's a great business model. That's the way most Wall Street investments are. I put a small amount of money in, and I expect a, a cow back. Unfortunately, it's normally um, a dead cow. But. The, unfortunately, the uh, the ratio of number of calves that have come out of this and how much you could actually sell them for was less than we anticipated. All right, so it was just a business. We didn't know a lot about it. If we looked at our investor DNA, we wouldn't have done it. We invested in this three, four years ago. We're waiting to wind this thing down. Thankfully, Joey, I'm assuming the income is coming from us selling calves. Yeah, calves or parts. Like you can sell partials of some of the, the <laughs> we have a, a partials. I mean, is that, I mean, is that like hamburger partial, steak? No, partial ownership steak in like our steak, steak not the S-T-A-K-E, not S-T-E-A-K. Gotcha. Um, but yes, so our, our bull and we also have like a, a mama cow. I think most people, as they hear you trying to explain this, feel that you're full of bull. I am. I, I really don't know enough about this. So, and, so which we're, is another reason. We're slowly winding this thing down. But from an investor perspective, I like the fact that we showed positive income. That's right. <laughs> At some point, this is gonna, the income is going to be zero and the expenses are going to be zero because it's going to be gone. That's right. All right. Um, we, we also, are, it went, are, so it went, we brought in $6,741 last month. That was a 8,522% return of, <laughs> increase over <laughs> last month. <laughs> I don't know if that's a fair response, but that's what it was. Yeah, probably not. All right. So wake up in Birmingham. If you're watching this, you're seeing the screen, you see the WUIB that stands for wake up in Birmingham. That is a company where we rent out units. STR means short term rental. We do that as, as as little as one night sometimes mostly there's, there's at least two night stays we have people that are staying with us as long as six months right now there's some people who are local if you've ever wondered of like how do people make money using airbnb or vrbr vrbo that's what this is about we own one unit we actually rent the other 20 some odd units and, and we we run a management company and, and this is our, our process. So income, and we took out some um, like expenses and stuff like that. We don't think need to be accounted for income with taxes and cleaning fees and things like that. So our net for last month, Joey, was 15,554, which is actually 20% down from the previous month. Most people would be like, well, I would think June would probably have been better than May. Why was it less? Well, here's the thing. We think that we may not have been counting all of the taxes properly. Up to I, this point. I know that we didn't put that on the report the months before. <laughs> I, it's not that I didn't think. Like, we paid the taxes. Yeah. Unfortunately, we always have to pay those stupid things. But what we didn't do for the report here, we weren't putting taxes as a line item. 
what you pay for the the rental uh, you have to actually pay a fee. tax you have to pay like three dollars per unit per, per night. night rented that's right then you have like a 10 percent lodging tax for the city you may have a five percent lodging tax for the county that you're in yep it it really starts to get expensive now clearly one of the things we're doing is going back and saying, hey, do we need to adjust our prices? Should we start accounting for this higher thing? Because what Nelson Nash, the author of Becoming Your Own Banker book, used to always tell us is that, look, I can sell my books for 40% less if I didn't have to pay income tax on them. That's right. He, he says, I don't pay tax. I just pass it along. I think this was great insight for us to say, hey, we didn't have quite all the line items. So we need to go back and evaluate. Do we believe like this was a good, fair return on our money? Or should we start charging more? And I think we should go up. I think. Well, I always think we should go up. <laughs> <laughs> so we we both have different units, and like I have actually some units outside of Joey in here. So if you're looking at this, you notice there's a line item for me, and, and those numbers uh, are are accounted for in there. All right. The next. But by the way, when you come through Birmingham, as one of our listeners just recently did. Let us know by going to wakeupinbirmingham.com. Let our operator know you heard about us on the podcast. And there will be and a special little thing put in the room. That's right. A special gift and a discount. So don't miss out on that. Yeah. Just mention podcast to Clint. Yeah. If you're traveling through Birmingham, please stay. We have really, really nice places. I would say our places are definitely in the top 5% of the places that you could rent. No in doubt. Birmingham. No doubt. And so then the next slide item you see is a E. T H ETH miners. <laughs> and what does that mean? Ethereum. Ethereum. Miners. Okay, that's a form of cryptocurrency. That's right. The, if I had you explain this, would it be better or worse than you explaining the uh, embryo coming out with bull? I'm not doing it again this month. You ask me every month. I jack it up every month. Bottom line is we have money that comes from cryptocurrency. Yeah, we just own computers that we bought three or four years ago. We've increased the number of computers we buy. We get this question a lot. Hey, how do I buy those same things? That's not something we're at liberty to just be able to share on the podcast. There's actually different laws and regulations that prevent us from doing that. So I can't unfortunately tell you that. But what I would say is last month, um, the price of uh, cryptocurrency as a whole was down, I don't know, 40%. And when um, maybe the, more than that, when, when the price was down, well, I think the price was down 40%, but then also you had. Um, the actual um, transactions that were happening with the cryptocurrency was down another 10 to 20%. So what we experienced is our our miners were not performing as nearly the amount of transactions they were the month before. So we got less of those coins in, and then the, the value of those coins were down 40%. So when you look at what our result was, yes, we brought in, uh, what, what's the total between those two? Uh, about eighty two hundred dollars. Okay, so we we brought in eighty two fourteen. I'm sorry. Oh yes, okay. I was at it. I saw a different thing. So we we brought in eighty two hundred dollars, and when we bought these machines, we put in a couple hundred thousand dollars total, and they've been kicking this off for for a long, long time. That's right. That that's still pretty good, right? No doubt. Now, are we selling Ethereum? We are not. No, we we change. We were doing that. We were, we were selling the Ethereum for U.S. dollars and using that as just like a rental income, like every month having that as a, a extra cash flow. However, we learned some things as we continue to learn about three or four months ago, five months ago, and started to see this as a replacement currency for the U.S. dollar and saying, we need to hold on to some of this. We need to, if, if, the U.S. dollar is the one that's most volatile, especially in this environment where the government is just constantly printing money. The value of that currency is dropping like a rock. Whereas cryptocurrency is operating with the, the laws of money. And in that case, it is increasing in value. Even when you see the prices being volatile, the actual currency itself is gaining more and more notoriety and, and potentially would become a replacement. So we're holding on to it or we're switching it to Bitcoin. Oh, here's, here's a simplified version of that. Come on in. We, we, our, our lunch guest is, is going to hop in here for just a second. But I, I, what I would say as a replacement to the U S dollar that continues to become less and less and less, it, it is another place to store value. And some of you who've watched the show in the past have had a chance to, to hear from Tao Simpson. Tao is 
um, someone that is going to share a new idea with us. And uh, I was going to try to bring you on the screen. I don't know how to do that. Do you guys like new ideas? That's something you. <laughs> is that something you usually go for? New ideas. We love Always. new. We love yeah. new ideas. So thank you. And and Tao's actually going to be sharing another form of currency with us here in a second. I won't. We were not going to let you share it on the air. It's just a teaser. It's just a teaser. Just stay tuned in. Yeah, we'll come back and <laughs> if it becomes a line item, we'll have yeah. you come back and explain it so Joey doesn't beat it up. Yes. All right. So going going down the road, you see ATMs. We own machines where you can get money out of. Most of the times, we only experience ATMs these days when we're at the casinos. Um, some of you will be visiting with us out in Las Vegas next month when we're at the Land Geek Boot Camp. That's right. And I may or may not be seeing you at one of those ATM machines. <laughs> Potentially, I mean, hopefully we own it. I'm just going to say I'm I'm checking on it <laughs> to see how it's performing, not That's necessarily it. having to get right. dollars out of it. Quality control. It, exactly. That that always <laughs> happens. Right. Uh, thankfully, the income in that is very steady. We get that income every single month. Um, our our rental, which is two thousand one eighty four. Yeah. Our rental income. And this is where we really need your help, Tal. Our rental income from our. <laughs> So-called multifamily syndication and one solo uh, rental unit is pretty poor. That's do, right. Do you, do you think you can make a living? On, you're probably on, investing <laughs> with the wrong person. That's, that's do, the problem. Do, do you think you can make a living, Tao, off what we bring in and just rental income? Uh, maybe a hundred years ago. A hundred dollars. <laughs> that's your number. I don't know if you're, you're, you're if you're confused by that one hundred in that column. That's the two things we're adding up for rental income here. Yeah, uh, that's not going to work. Yeah, the land business looks good. Yeah, the, well, yeah, of course the land business looks good. But I'm just focusing on rental income. It is struggling. I'm just looking for silver lining. <laughs> no, actually, that looks really good. Forty three five. Well, you take yeah. that part as a yeah. whole. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I. That's why I got to try a bunch of different things and see well, what happens. that's what we're doing. We've got basically everything. Now, the only thing, we're going to end with this, the only thing we didn't put on here, Joey, we made a, a pretty significant investment in a new business in the month of June. And you want to share about that? Because to me, we got to build up some income for this thing. we got to like build some pub. I don't, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> he doesn't even remember what business we invested in. I mean, there's so many. Oh my goodness. This is great. Um, it, you, you light it. And it produces a scent in your room. Oh, gosh. Yes, the candle business. <laughs> oh, candle business. Stack candles. Normally, whenever you think um, investment with Joey, it's he lights a candle and he's burning money. That feels like three months ago. <laughs> like, I don't even know why you said June. I'm like, that, that seemed like it was a long time ago. Yeah, go. If, please, if you would love a, a simple gift for a friend, a housewarming gift, um, an anniversary gift, a gift for your mother, your dad. doesn't have to be Mother's Father's Day. It could be Christmas. It could be anything. Right now, I tell you what, just right now, go to stack.com. Is that what it is? Is That's it stackhandle.com? Is it stack.com? I I want you to be the one that don't know because I'm usually the one that doesn't. Know. I don't know. I'm asking you. This is like a phone a friend here. I have no idea. That that really. That's, I think it's stackcandles.com. That is not a good sign. So if you're out there trying to find this for us, it, it you you type in stack. Oh, it's yeah. stackcandles.com. Did I say that? I said that. I heard you say I don't know. Is what I heard you I said. Say. I think it's stackcandles.com. I said both. <laughs> <laughs> he covered all his bases. <laughs> so as you're looking at it, go to stackcandles.com. We would. Oh look. yeah, we have detergents too. Ooh, what does that mean? Detergents, like this is so, the little. I mean, you guys smell when you walk by somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, that smells amazing, and they're like, yes, my laundry detergent. Mm -hmm. they, they got it from Stack. Yeah, well, the, these are actually hand poured here in Alabama. So you have a redneck putting this together. We have made them take a bath before they do it. Um, they didn't have to shave their mustache, but they do work locally. I hope that you will love this as much as we do. The mission of the company, the kind of purpose behind it is super solid. And I hope that you would take advantage of this. Love to see you uh, buy one. And then please go on social and share that with us. That that would be really cool to see that happening. All right. So, Joey, the month of June, we brought in 43526 It was less than the 56000 we brought in last month. I think some of that, to be fair, is that we weren't accounting for a decent amount of taxes on yep. the short-term rental business. We had We had some fluctuations, but still, all in all, it would require what was that number again? Seventeen, 17 million, million four hundred 
to produce the 43,526. I think we're doing pretty good. Way we got we got a, um, a verbal uh, commitment and approval from Tao Simpson, uh, the man of all uh, real estate investors. And so we think we pre- did pretty good. I hope that you are inspired by this. I would love for you to share with us um, some successes that you had this past month with your passive income and how you got closer to financial freedom. But now let's go eat a lunch and go eat some lunch with Tao and uh, let you get back to your day. Hope you have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.